Chapter 68 Divorce Chapter 1 O Prophet, when you divorce women, divorce them at their Iddah and count their Iddah. Narrated Abdullah bin Umar that he had divorced his wife while she was menstruating during the lifetime of Allah's Messenger. <coughs> Umar bin al Khattab ask, asked Allah's Messenger about that. Allah's Messenger said, Order him, your son, to take her back and keep her till she is clean, and then to wait till she gets her next period and becomes clean again. Whereupon, if he wishes to keep her, he can do so, and if he wishes to divorce her, he can divorce her before having sexual intercourse with her. And that is the prescribed period while Allah has fixed for the woman meant to be divorced. To be divorced. Chapter 2 Divorce during the menses is con counted as one legal divorce. Narrated Anas bin Serin. Ibn Umar said, I divorced my wife while she was menstruating. Umar mentioned that to the Prophet. The Prophet said to my father, Let your son take her back. I asked Ibn Umar, Is such a divorce counted here as one legal divorce? Ibn Umar said, of course, narrated Yunus bin Jubair. Ibn Umar said, The Prophet said to Umar, Order him, Ibn Umar, to take her back. I asked, Is such a divorce counted as one legal divorce? Ibn Umar said, What do you think if someone becomes helpless and foolish? Narrated Ibn Umar, Divorcing my wife during her menses was counted as one legal divorce. Chapter 3 Should a man tell his wife face to face that she is divorced? Narrated al -Af Afsa. I asked As Suri which of the wives of the Prophet sought refuge with Allah from him. He said, I was told by Urva that Aisha said, when the daughter of al jaun was brought to Allah's Messenger as his bride and he went near her, she said, I seek refuge with Allah from you. Refuge with Allah from you. He said, You have sought refuge with the great with the great. Return to your family. Narrated Abu Usaid. We went out with the Prophet to a garden called Ash Shavt, till we reached two walls between which we sat down. The Prophet said, sit here, and went in the garden. The Jaunia, a lady from Bani Jaun, had, had been brought and lodged in a house in a date palm garden in the home of Umeima, bint an Bint An Numan bin Sharahil, and her, and her wet nurse was with her. When the Prophet entered upon her, he said to her, Give me yourself in marriage as a gift. She said, Can a princess give herself in marriage to an ordinary man? The Prophet raised his hand to pat her so that she might become tranquil. Tranquil. She said, I seek refuge with Allah from you. He said, You have sought refuge, refuge with one who gives refuge. Then the Prophet came out to us and said, O Abu Usaid, give her two white linen dresses to wear and let her go back to her family. Narrated Saul and Abu Usaid. The Prophet married um Umayma bint Sharahil. And when she was brought to him, he stretched his hand towards her. It seemed that she disliked that, 
Whereupon the Prophet ordered Abu Usay to prepare her and to provide her with two white linen dresses. Narrated Saul bin Saad, similarly as above, 182. Narrated Abi Galab Yunus bin Jubair. I ask Ibn Umar, what is said regarding a man divorces his wife during her period? He said, do you know Ibn Umar? Ibn Umar divorced his wife while she was menstruating. Umar then went to the Prophet and mentioned that to him. The Prophet ordered him to take her back and when she became clean he could divorce her if he wanted. I asked Ibn Umar, was that divorce counted as one legal divorce? He said, if one becomes helpless and foolish, will he be excused? Of course not. Chapter 4 To divorce one's wife thrice at a time. Narrated Saul bin Saad As Saidi Uvaimir al Ajlani came to Asim bin Adi al Ansari and asked, O oh Asim, tell me, if a man sees his wife with another man, should he kill him? Whereupon you would kill him in Kisas, or what should he do? O oh Asim, please ask Allah's Messenger about that. Asim asked Allah's Messenger about that. Allah's Apostle disliked that question and considered it disgraceful. What Asim heard from Allah's Messenger was hard on him. When he returned to his family, Uvaimir came to him and said, O oh Asim, what did Allah's Messenger say to you? Asim said, you never bring me any good. Allah's Messenger disliked to hear the problem which I asked him about. Uvaimir said, By Allah, I will not leave the matter till I ask him about it. So Uvaimir proceeded till he came to Allah's Messenger, who was in the midst of the people, and said, O oh Allah's Messenger, if a man finds with his wife another man, should he kill him? Whereupon you will kill him in Kisas, or otherwise what should he do? Allah's Messenger said, Allah has revealed something concerning the question of you and your wife. Go and bring her here. So they both carried out the judgment of Leon, while I was present among the people as a witness. When both of them had finished, Uvaimir said, O oh Allah's Messenger, if I should now keep my wife with me, then I have told a lie. Then he pronounced his decision to divorce her thrice before Allah's Apostle ordered him to do so. Ibn Shihab said that was the tradition for all those who are involved in the case of Leon. Narrated Aisha The wife of Rifa al Qurasi came to Allah's Messenger and said, O oh Allah's Messenger, Rifa divorced me irrevocably. Irre irrevocably. After him, I married Abdur Rahman bin Asubair al Qurasi, who proved to be impotent. Allah's messenger said to her, Perhaps you want to return to Rifa? Nay, you cannot return to Rifa until you and Abdur Rahman cons consummate your marriage. Narrated Aisha A man divorced his wife thrice by expressing his decision to divorce her thrice, then she married another man who also divorced her. The Prophet was asked if she could legally marry the first husband or not. The Prophet, prophet replied, no, she cannot marry the first husband unless the second husband consummate his marriage with her, just as the first husband had done. Chapter 5 Giving Option to the Wives Narrated Aisha Allah's Messenger gave us the option to remain with him or to be divorced and we selected Allah and his Apostle so giving us that option was not regarded as divorce 
narrated Masruk. I asked Aisha about the option. She said, the Prophet gave us the option. Do you think that option was considered as a divorce? I said, it matters little to me if I give my wife the option once or a hundred times after she has chosen me. Chapter 6 If a man says, says to his wife, I have parted with you or I have released you. Chapter 7 Whoever said to his wife, You are haram for me. Nafi said, When Ibn Umar was asked about the person who had given three divorces, he said, Would that you gave one or two divorces? For the Prophet ordered me to do so. If you give three divorces, then she cannot be lawful for you until she has married another husband and is divorced by him. Narrated Aisha A man divorced his wife and she married another man who proved to be impotent and divorced her. She could not get her satisfaction from him and after a while he divorced her. Then she came to the Prophet and said, O oh, Allah's Messenger, my first husband divorced me and then I married another man who entered upon me to consummate his marriage, but he proved to be impotent and did not approach me except once during which he benefited nothing from me. Can I remarry my first husband in this case? Allah's Messenger said, It is unlawful to marry your first husband till the other husband consummates his marriage with you. Chapter 8 O Prophet, why do you forbid that which Allah has allowed you? Allowed to you? Narrated Said bin Jubair that he heard Ibn Abbas saying, If a man makes his wife unlawful for, for him, it does not mean that she is divorced. He added, Indeed, in the Messenger of Allah, you have a good example to follow. Narrated Ubaid bin Umar I heard Aisha saying, the Prophet used to stay for a long while with Sanab bin bint Josh, Josh. Zainab bin Josh. And drink honey at their house. So Hafsa and I decided that if the Prophet came to any one of us, she should say, she should say to him, she should say him, I detect the smell of Maga Hafid, a nasty smelling gum, in you. Have you eaten Maga Hafid? So the Prophet visited one of them and she raised and she said to him sim similarly. The Prophet said, Never mind, I have taken some honey at the house of Zainab bit Josh, Josh, but I shall never drink of it anymore. So there was revealed, O Prophet, why do you ban for you that which Allah has made lawful for you? If you two wives of, of Prophet turn in repentance to Allah, 66, 1 to 4, addressing Aisha and Hafsa, when the Prophet disclosed a matter in confidence to some of his wives, 66, 3, namely his saying, But I have taken some honey. Narrated Aisha. Allah's messenger was fond of honey and sweet edible things and it was his habit that after finishing the Asr prayer he would visit his wives and stay with one of them at, the, at that time. Once he went to Hafsa, the daughter of Umar, and stayed with her more than usual, I got jealous and asked the reason for that. I was told that a lady of her folk had given her a skin filled with honey as a present and that she made a syrup from it and gave it to the Prophet to drink and that was the reason for the delay. I said, by Allah we will play a trick on him to prevent him from doing so. So I said to Sada bint Sama, the Prophet will approach you and when he comes near you say, have you taken maga feed, a bad smelling gum? He will say, 
No, then say to him, Then what is this bad smell which I smell from you? He will say to you, Hafsa made me drink honey syrup. Then say, Perhaps the bees of that honey had sucked the juice of the tree of Al Urfut. I shall also say the same. O oh, you, Sophia, say the same. Later Salah said, By Allah, as soon as he, the Prophet, stood at the door, I was about to say to him, What you had ordered me to say because I was afraid of you. So when the Prophet came near Sada, she said to him, O oh Allah's Messenger, have you taken Maga, Maga Hafid? He said, No. She said, Then what is this bad smell which I detect on you? He said, Hafsa made me drink honey syrup. She said, Perhaps, perhaps its bees had sucked the juice of all Urfu tree when he came to me. I also said the same, and when he went to Sophia, she also said the same. And when the Prophet again went to Hafsa, she said, O oh Allah's Messenger, shall I give you more of that drink? He said, I am not in need of it. Sada said, By Allah, we deprived him of it. I said to her, Keep quiet. Chapter 9 There is no divorce before marriage. Chapter 10 If under compulsion somebody says about his wife, she is my sister. Chapter 11 A divorce given in a state of anger, under compulsion or under the effect of intoxicants or insanity. Narrated Abu Huraira the Prophet said, Allah has forgiven my followers the evil thoughts that occur to their minds, as long as such thoughts are not put into action or uttered. And Qatada said, if someone divorces his wife just in his mind, such an un un unuttered divorce has no effect. Narrated Jabir, a man from the tribe of Bani Aslam came to the Prophet while he was in the mosque and said, I have committed illegal sexual intercourse. The Prophet turned his face to the other side. The man turned towards the side towards which the Prophet had turned his face and gave four witnesses against himself. On that the Prophet called him and said, Are you insane? He added, Are you married? The man said, Yes. On that the Prophet ordered him to be stoned to death, to the death in a musallah. A praying place. When the stones hit him with their sharp edges and he fled, but he was caught at Al Hara and then killed. Narrated Abu Huraira A man from Bani Aslam came to Allah's Messenger while he was in the mosque and called the Prophet, saying, O oh Allah's Messenger, I have committed illegal sexual intercourse. On that the Prophet turned his face from him to the other side, whereupon the man moved to the, to the side towards which the Prophet had turned his face and said, O oh Allah's Messenger, I have committed illegal sexual intercourse. The Prophet turned his face from him to the other side, whereupon the man moved to the side towards which the Prophet had turned his face and repeated his statement. The Prophet turned his face from him to the other side again. The man moved again and repeated his, repeated his statement for the fourth time. So when the man had given witness four times against himself, the Prophet called him and said, Are you insane? He replied, No. The Prophet then said to his companions, Go and stone him to death. The man was a married one. Jabir bin Abdullah al-Ansari said, I was one of those who stoned him. We stoned him at the, at the Musalla Eid praying place in Medina. When the stones hit him with, the, with their sharp edges, he fled, but we caught him at al hara and stoned him till he died. Chapter 12, al Kul and how a divorce is given according to it. Narrated Ibn Abbas 
the wife of Ephabit bin Qais came to the Prophet and said, O oh Allah's Messenger, I do not blame Thabit for defects in his character or his religion, but I, being a Muslim, dislike to behave in an in un Islamic manner if I remain with him. On that, Allah's Messenger said to her, Will you give back the garden which your husband has given you, Asmar? She said, Yes. Then the Prophet said to Fabit, O oh Fabit, accept your garden and divorce her once. <clears throat> narrated Ikrima, the sister of Abdullah bin Ubay, narrated the above narration, 197, with the addition that the Prophet said to Fabit's wife, Will you return his garden? She said yes, and returned it, and then the Prophet ordered Fabit to divorce her. Narrated Ibn Abbas, the wife of Fabit bin Qais came to Allah's Messenger and said, O oh Allah's Messenger, I do not blame Fabit for any defects in his character or his religion, but I cannot endure to live with him. On that Allah's Messenger said, Will you return his garden to him? She said, Yes. Narrated Ibn Abbas, the wife of Fabit bin Qais bin Shamas came to the Prophet and said, O oh Allah's Messenger, I do not blame Fabit for any defects in his character or his religion, but I am afraid that I, being a Muslim, may become un unthankful for Allah's blessings. On that Allah's Messenger said to her, Will you return his garden to him? She said yes, so she returned his garden to him and the Prophet told him to divorce her. Narrated Ikrima, that Jamila then he related the whole Hadith, yet 199. Chapter 13, Ash Shikak, the breach between the man and his wife. <coughs> Narrated Al Miswar bin Makrama as Suri. I heard a prophet saying, Banu al Mughira have asked my leave to let Ali marry their daughter, but I give no leave to this effect. Chapter 14 Selling a female slave does not lead to her divorce. Narrated Aisha, the wife of the prophet. Three traditions were established concerning situations in which Bara was involved. When she was manumitted, she was given the option to keep her husband or leave him. Allah's Messenger said, The Vala is for the one who manumits. Once Allah's Messenger entered the house while some meat was being cooked in a pot, but only bread and, soup and some soup of the house were placed before him. He said, Don't I see the pot containing meat? They said, Yes. But that meat was given to Barira in charity by someone. And you do not eat what it given in charity. The Prophet said, That meat is alms for her, but for us it is a present. Chapter 15 A female slave whose husband is a slave has the option to keep him or leave him when she is manumitted. Narrated Ibn Abbas I saw him as a slave, namely Barira's husband. Narrated Ibn Abbas That was Mughit, the slave of Bani so and so, yet Barira's husband, as if I am now looking at him following her. Barira along the streets of Medina. Narrated Ibn Abbas Barira's husband was a black slave called Mughit, the slave of Bani, so and so, as if I am seeing him now, walking behind her along the streets of Medina. Chapter 16 the intercession of the Prophet Sas for Barida's husband. Narrated Ibn Abbas. 
Barida's husband was a slave called Mughit, as if I am seeing him now, going behind Barida and weeping with his tears, flowing down his beard. The Prophet said to Abbas, O oh Abbas, are you not astonished at the love of Mughit for Barida and the hatred of Barida for Mughit? The Prophet then said to Barida, Why don't you return to him? She said, O oh Allah's Messenger, do you order me to do so? He said, No, I only intercede for him. She said, I am not in need of him. Chapter 17 Chapter Narrated Al Aswad Aisha intended to buy Barira, but her masters stipulated that her wala wound be for them. Aisha mentioned that to the Prophet, who said to Aisha, Buy an manimeter, for the wala is for the one who manimits. Once some once some me was brought to the Prophet and was said, This meat was given in charity to Barira. The Prophet said, Eat an object of charity for Barira and present for us. Narrated Adam Shuba relate the same hadith and added, Barira was given the option regarding her husband. Chapter 18 Do not marry al mush Mushirkat till they believe. <coughs> Narrated Nafi Whenever Ibn Umar was asked about marrying a Christian lady or a Jewess, he would say, Allah has made it unlawful for the believers to marry ladies who ascribe partners in worship to Allah, and I do not know of a greater thing as regards to ascribing partners in worship, etc., to Allah, than that a lady should say that Jesus is her Lord, although he is just one of Allah's slaves. Chapter 19 Marrying al Mushrikat who had embraced Islam and their Idda. Narrated Ibn Abbas, the pagans were of two kinds as regards their relationship to the Prophet and the believers. Some of them were those with whom the Prophet was at war and used to fight against, and they used to fight him. The others were those with whom the Prophet made a treaty, and neither did the Prophet fight them nor did they fight him. If a lady from the first group of pagans emigrated towards the Muslims, her hand would not be asked in marriage unless she got the menses and then became clean. When she became clean, it would be lawful for her to get married, and if her husband emigrated too before she got married, then she would be returned to him. If any slave or female slave emigrated from them to the Muslims, then they will be considered free persons, not slaves, and they would have the same rights as given to other emigrants. The narrator then mentioned about the pagans involved with the Muslims in a treaty, the same as occurs in Mujahid's narration. If a male slave or a female slave emigrated from such pagans, As had made a treaty with the Muslims, they would not be returned. But their prices would be paid to the pagans. Narrated Ibn Abbas Kariba, the daughter of Abi Umayyah, was the wife of Umar bin al Khattab. Umar divorced her, and then Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan married her. Similarly, Umm al-Hakam, the daughter of Abi, Abi Sufyan, was the wife of Iliad, um, Liad bin Gam al-Firi. He divorced her and then Abdullah bin Uthman al-Takafi married her. Chapter 20 If an adulteress 
or a Christian woman becomes a Muslim while she is the wife of a, a wife of Dimi or a or a mushrik at war with the Muslims. Narrated Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, when believing women came to the Prophet as immigrants, he used to test them in accordance with the order of Allah. O you who believe, when believing women come to you as immigrants, examine them. 60.10 So if any one of those believing women accepted the above mentioned conditions, she accepted the condition, conditions of fate. When they agreed on those conditions and confessed that, and confessed that with their tongues, Allah's Messenger would say to them, Go, I have accepted your oath of allegiance for Islam. By Allah and hand of Allah's Messenger never touch the hand of any woman, but he only used to take their pledge of allegiance orally. By Allah, Allah's Messenger did not take the pledge of allegiance of the woman except in accordance with what Allah had ordered him. When he accepted their pledge of allegiance, he would say to them, I have accepted your oath of allegiance. Chapter 21 Those who take an oath not to have sexual relation with their re- relations with their wives must wait for most must wait four months. Narrated Anas bin Malik Allah's Messenger took an oath that he would abstain from his wives, and at that time his leg had been sprained, dislocated. So he stayed in the mashruba, an attic room of his office for of his for 29 days. Then he came down, and the day the people said, "O oh Allah's messenger, you took an oath to abstain from your wives for one month." He said, "The month is of 29 days." Narrated Nafi. Ibn Umar used to say about the Ilah, which Allah defined in the Holy Book. If the period of Ilah expires, then the husband has either to retain his wife in a handsome manner or to divorce her as Allah has ordered. Ibn Umar added, when the period of four months has expired, the husband should be put in prison so that he should divorce his wife, but the divorce does not occur unless the husband himself declares it. This has been mentioned by Uthman, Ali, Abu, ad darda Aisha and twelve other companions of the Prophet. Chapter 22 the regulations concerning the property and family of, lo- of a lost person. Narrated Yasid, the Mavila of Munbait, the Prophet was asked regarding the case of a lost sheep. He said, you should take it because it is for you, or for you, for your brother, or for the wolf. Then he was asked about a lost camel, he got angry, and his face became red, and he said to the questioner, You have nothing to do with it, it has its feet and its water container with it. It can go on drinking water and eating trees till its owner meets it. And then the prophet was asked about a lucata, money found by somebody. He said, Remember and recognize its tying material and its container and make public announcement about it for one year. If somebody comes and identifies it, then give it to him, otherwise add it to your property. Chapter 23 of Sihad Chapter 24 Using gestures to express the decision of divorce Narrated Ibn Abbas, Allah's Messenger performed the tawaf around the Kaaba while riding his camel 
and every time he, he reached the corner of the black stone he pointed at it with his hand and said Allahu Akbar Zainab said the Prophet said an opening has been made in the wall of Gog and Magog like this and this forming the number 90 with his thumb and index finger narrated Abu Huraira Abu Qasim the Prophet said there is an hour or a moment, moment of particular significance on Friday if it happens that a Muslim is offering a prayer and invoking Allah for some good at that very moment Allah will grant him his request the sub narrator placed the top of his finger on the palm of the other hand between the middle finger and the little one narrated Anas bin Malik during the lifetime of Allah's messenger a Jew attacked a girl and took some silver ornaments she was wearing and crushed her head her relative brought her to the Prophet while she was in her last breaths and she was unable to speak Allah's messenger asked her who has hit you so and so mentioning somebody other than her murderer she moved her head indicating denial the Prophet mentioned another person other than the murderer and she again moved her head indicating denial then he asked was it so and so mentioning the name of her killer she nodded agreeing then the last messenger ordered that the head of the Jew be crushed between two stones narrated Ibn Umar I heard the Prophet saying afflictions will emerge from here pointing towards the east narrated Abdullah bin Abi Alpha We were with Allah's messenger on a journey and when the sun set he said to the man to a man get down and prepare a drink of savik for me the man said o oh Allah's messenger will you wait till it is evening Allah's messenger again said get down and prepare a drink of savik the man said O oh Allah's Apostle, will you wait till it is evening? For it is still daytime. The Prophet again said, Get down and prepare a drink of Savik. So the third time, the man got down and prepared a drink of Savik for him. Allah's Messenger drank the rough and pointed with his hand towards the east, saying, When you see the night falling from the, this side, then a fasting person should break his fast. Narrated Abdullah bin Masud. The Prophet said, The call or the adhan of Bilal should not stop you from taking the suhud meals. For Bilal calls or pronounces the adhan so that the one who is offering the night prayer should take a rest and he does not indicate the daybreak or dawn. The narrator Yasid described how dawn breaks by stretching out his hands and then separating them wide apart. Narrated Abu Huraira. Allah's Messenger said, The example of a miser and a generous person is like that of two persons wearing iron cloaks from the breast up to the neck. When a generous person spends, the iron cloak enlarges and spreads and spread over his skin so much so that it covers his fingertips and obliterates his tracks. As for the miser, as soon as he thinks of spending every ring, of the iron cloak sticks to its place against his body against his body and he tries to expand it but it does not expand the prophet pointed with his hand towards his throat 
Chapter 25 Al Liyal Narrated Anas bin Malik Allah's Messenger said, Shall I tell you of the best families among the Ansar? They the people said, Yes, O Allah's Messenger. The Prophet said, The best are Banu Am Najjar, and after them are Banu Abdil Ashal, and after them are Banu Al Harit bin Al Kas. Kasraj, and after them are Bani Saida. The Prophet then moved his hand by closing his fingers and then opening them like one throwing something, and then said, Anyhow, there is good in all the families of the Ansar. Narrated Saul bin Saad as Saidi. A companion of Allah's Messenger, Allah's Messenger holding out his middle and index fingers, said, My advent and the hours are like this or like these, namely the period between his era and the hour is like the distance between those two fingers, yeah, very short. Narrated Ibn Umar The Prophet holding out his ten fingers thrice said the month the month is thus and thus and thus namely 30 days then holding out his 10 fingers twice and then nine fingers he said it may be thus and thus and thus namely 29 days he meant once he meant once 30 days and once 29 days narrated Abu Masud the Prophet pointed with his hand towards Yemen and said twice, Fate is there, and then pointed towards the east and said, Verily, sternness and mercilessness are the qualities of those who are busy with their camels and pay no attention to their religion, where the two sides of the head of Satan will appear namely the tribes of Rabi, Rabla and Mukar. Narrated Saul Allah's Messenger said, I and the one who looks after an orphan will be like this in paradise, showing his middle and in index fingers and separating them. Chapter 26 If a husband suspects suspects his paternity to a child. Narrated Abu Hurairah, a man came to the Prophet and said, O oh Allah's Messenger, a black child has been born for me. The Prophet asked him, Have you got camels? The man said, Yes. The Prophet asked him, What color are they? The man replied, Red. The Prophet said, Is there a gray one among them? The man replied, Yes. The Prophet said, Whence comes that, he said, maybe it is because of heredit heredity. The Prophet said, maybe your latest son has this color because of heredity. Chapter Chapter 27 Commanding those who are involved in a case of Leon to take the oath. Narrated Abdullah an Ansari man accused his wife of committing illegal sexual intercourse. The Prophet made both of them take the oath, takes, takes the oath of Leon and separated them from each other by divorce. Chapter 28 The man should start the proce process of Leon, narrated Ibn Abbas. Hilal bin Umayya accused his wife of illegal sexual intercourse and came to the Prophet to bear witness against her, taking the oath of Leon. The Prophet was saying, Allah knows that either of you is a liar. Will any one of you repent to Allah? Then the lady got up and gave her witness. Chapter 29 Al-Leon and divorce after the process of Leon 
narrated Saul bin Saad as Saidi. Uvaimir al Ajlani came to Asim bin Ad al Ansari and said to him, O Asim, suppose a man saw another man with his wife, would he kill him? Whereupon you would kill him, or what should they do? what should he do? Please, O Asim, ask about this on my behalf. Asim asked Allah's Messenger about it. Allah's Messenger disliked that question and considered it disgraceful. What Asim heard from Allah's Messenger was hard on him. When Asim returned to his family, Uvaimir came to him and said, O Asim, what did Allah's Messenger say to you? Asim said to Uvaimir, You never bring me any good. Allah's Messenger disliked the problem which I asked him about. Uvaimir said, By Allah, I will not give up this matter until I ask the Prophet about it. So Uvaimir proceeded till he came to Allah's Messenger in the midst of people and said, O Allah's Messenger, if a man sees another man with his wife, would he kill him? Whereupon you would kill him, or what should he do? Allah's Messenger said, Allah has revealed some decree as regards you and your wife's case. Go and bring her. So they carried out the process of Leon while I was present among the people with Allah's Messenger. When they had finished their Leon, Uvaimir said, O oh Allah's Messenger, if I should now keep her with me as a wife, then I have told a lie. So he divorced her thrice before Allah's Messenger ordered him, Ibn Shihab said. So divorce was the, was the tradition for all those who were involved in a case of Leon. Chapter 30 To carry out Leon in a mosque Narrated Ibn Juray Juraj Ibn Shihab informed me of Leon and the tradition related to it re referring to the narration of Saul bin Saad the brother of Bani Saidi he said An Ansari man came to Allah's messenger and said O oh Allah's Apostle, if a man saw another man with his wife, should he kill him, or what should he do? So Allah revealed concerning his affair what is mentioned in the Holy Quran about the affair of those involved in a case of Leon. The Prophet said, Allah has given his verdict regarding you and your wife. So they carried out Leon in the mosque while I was present there. When they had finished, the man said, O oh Allah's Messenger, if I should now keep her with me as a wife, then I have told a lie about her. Then he divorced her thrice before Allah's Messenger ordered him, when they had finished the Leon process, so he divorced her in front of the Prophet. Ibn Shihab added, After their case, it became a tradition that a couple involved in a case of Leon should be separated by divorce. That lady was pregnant then, and later on her son was called by his mother's name. The tra tradition concerning their inheritance was that she would be his heir, and he would inherit of her property the share Allah had prescribed for him. Ibn Shiyab said that Saul bin Saad as Sayyidi said that the Prophet said in the above narration. If that lady delivers a small red child like a lizard, then the lady has spoken the truth and the man was a liar. But if she delivers a, a child with black eyes and huge lips, then her husband has spoken the truth. Then she delivered it in the shape one would dislike, as it proved her guilty. Chapter 31 If I were to stone any person to death without witnesses Narrated Al Qasim bin Muhammad Ibn Abbas said Once Leon was mentioned before the Prophet 
Whereupon Asim bin Adi said something and went away. Then a man from his tribe came to him, complaining that he had found a man with his wife. Asim said, I have not been put to task except for my statement about Leon. Asim took the man to the prophet and the man told him of the state in which he had found his wife. The man was pale, thin and of lank hair, while the other man whom he claimed he had seen with his wife was brown, fat and had much flesh on his calves. calves. The prophet invoked saying, O Allah, reveal the truth. So that lady delivered a child resembling the man whom her husband had mentioned he had found her with. The prophet then made them carry out Leon. Then a man from that gathering asked Ibn Abbas, was she the same lady regarding which the prophet had said, if I were to stone to death someone without witness, I would have stoned, stoned this lady, Ibn Abbas said. No, that was another lady who, though being a Muslim, used to arouse suspicion by her outright misbehavior. Chapter 32 The Mar in the Case of Leon Narrated Said bin Jabir I asked Ibn Umar, what is the verdict if a man accuses his wife of illegal sexual intercourse? Ibn Umar said, the Prophet separated by divorce the couple of Bani al Ajlan and said to them, Allah knows that one of you two is a liar, so will one of you repent? But both of them refused. He again said, Allah knows that one of you two is a liar, so will one of you repent? But both of them refused. So he separated them by divorce. Ayub, a sub-narrator, said Ahmed bin Dinar said to me, There is something else in this hadith which you have not mentioned. mentioned. It goes thus, the man said, What about my money? Yet the mar that I have given to my wife, it was said, You have no right to restore any money. For if you have spoken the truth as regards the accusation, you have also consummated your marriage with her. And if you have told a lie, you are less rightful to have your money back. Chapter 33 Surely one of you two is a liar, so will one of you repent to Allah? Narrated Said bin Jubair. I asked Ibn Umar about those who were involved in a case of Lien. He said, the Prophet said to those who were involved in a case of Lien, your accounts are with Allah. One of you two is a liar and you the husband have no rights right over her. She is divorced. The man said, what about my property, Maud? Question mark. The Prophet said, you have no right to get back your property. If you have told the truth about her, then your property was for the consummation of your marriage with her. And if you told a lie about her, then you are less rightful to get your property back. Sufyan, a sub-narrator said, I learned the hadith from Ahmed narrator, uh, from Ahmed narrated Ayyub. I heard Sa Said bin Jubair saying, I asked Ibn Umar if a man accuses his wife for an illegal sexual intercourse and carries out the process of Leon, what will happen? Ibn Umar set two of his fingers apart. Sufyan set his in index finger and middle finger apart. Ibn Umar said, The Prophet separated the couple of Bani al Ajlan by divorce and said thrice, Allah knows that one of you two is a liar, so will one of you repent to Allah. Chapter 34 The separation between those who are involved between those who are involved in a case of Leon. Narrated Ibn Umar Allah's messenger separated divorced 
the wife from her husband who accused her for an illegal sexual intercourse and made them take the oath of Leon. Narrated Ibn Umar, the prophet made an Ansari man and his wife carry out Leon and then separated them by divorce. Chapter 35 The child is to be given to the lady accused by her husband. Narrated Ibn Umar The Prophet made a man and his wife carry out Leon, and the husband repudiated her child. So the Prophet got them separated by divorce and decided that the child belonged to the mother only. Chapter 36 O Allah, reveal the truth. Narrated Ibn Abbas. Those involved in a case of Leon were mentioned before Allah's Messenger. Asim bin Adi said something about that and then left. Later on, a man from his tribe came to him and told him that he had found another man with his wife. On that, Asim said, I am not being put to task ex except for what I have said about Leon. Asim took the man to Allah's messenger and he told him of the state in which he found his wife. The man was pale, thin and lank haired, while the other man whom he had found with his wife was brown, fat with thick calves and curly hair. Allah's messenger said, O oh Allah, reveal the truth. Then the lady delivered a child resembling the man whom her husband had mentioned he had found, her, he had found with her. So Allah's messenger ordered them to carry out Leon. A man from that gathering said to Ibn Abbas, Was she the same lady regarding whom Allah's messenger said, If I were to stone to death someone without witnesses, I would have stoned this lady? Ibn Abbas said, No, that was another lady who though being a Muslim used to, uh, used to arouse suspicion because of her outright misbehavior. Chapter 37 Marriage of a divorced woman to another man, but he does not consummate his marriage with her. Narrated Aisha Rifa al-Qurasi married a lady and then divorced her, whereupon she married another man. She came to the Prophet and said that her new husband did not approach her and that he was completely ignorant, completely impotent. The Prophet said to her, No, you cannot remarry your first husband till you taste the second husband and he tastes you, yet yeah, till he con consummates his marriage with you. Chapter 38 And those of your women as have passed the age of monthly co courses, Chapter 39 For those who are pregnant, their idda is until they lay down their burdens. Narrated Um Salama The wife of the Prophet, a lady from Bani Aslam called Subaya, became become a widow while she was pregnant. Abu Asq Sanabil bin Bakak demanded her hand in marriage, but she refused to marry him and said, by Allah, I cannot marry him unless I have completed one of the two prescribed periods. About ten days later, after having delivered her child, she went to the Prophet and he said to her, You can marry now. Narrated Abdullah bin Abdullah that his father had written to Ibn al arkam a letter asking him to ask Subaya al Aslamiyah. How the Prophet had given her the verdict, she said, The Prophet gave me his verdict that after I give birth I could marry. Narrated Al Misver bin Makrama Subaya al Aslamiya gave birth to a child a few days after the death of her husband. She came to the Prophet and asked permission to remarry and the Prophet gave her permission and she got married. Chapter 40 
and divorced women shall wait for free menstrual periods. Chapter 41 The Story of Fatima Bint Kais Narrated Qasim bin Muhammad and Sulaiman bin Yasar that Yahya bin Said bin Al As divorced the daughter of Abdur Rahman bin Al Hakan. Abdur Rahman took her to his house. On that, Aisha sent a message to Marwan bin Al Hakam, who was the ruler of Medina, saying, Fear Allah and urge your brother to return her to her house. Marwan in Sulaiman's version said, Abdur Rahman bin Al Hakam did not obey me or had a convincing argument. In Al Qasim's versions, Marwan said, Have you not heard of the case of Fatima bint Qais? Aisha said, The case of Fatima bint Qais is not in your favor. Marwan bin Al Hakam said to Aisha, The reason that made Fatima bin Qais go to her father's house is just ap applicable to the daughter of Abdur Rahman. Narrated Al Qasim. Aisha said, What is wrong with Fatima? Why doesn't she fear Allah by saying that a divorced lady is not entitled to, to be provided with residence and sustenance by her husband? Narrated Qasim, Urwa said to Aisha, Do you know so and so, the daughter of Al Hakam? Her husband divorced her irrevocably, and she left her husband's house. Aisha said, What a bad thing she has done. Urwa said to Aisha, Haven't you heard the statement of Fatima? Aisha replied, It is not in her favor to mention. Urwa added, Aisha approach, uh, Aisha reproached. Fatima sev severally and said Fatima was in a lonely place and she was prone to danger so the Prophet allowed her to go out of her husband's house. <laughs> Chapter 42 If a divorced lady is afraid that she may be attacked in her husband's house Narrated Urva Aisha disapproved of what Fatima used to say Chapter 43 And it is not lawful for them to conceal what Allah has created in their wombs. Narrated Aisha When Allah's Messenger decided to leave Mecca after the Hajj, he saw Safiya sad and standing at the entrance of her tent. He said to her, Akir or Hulk, you will detain us. Did you perform Tawaf al Ifada on the day of Nar? She said, yes. He said, then you can depart. Chapter 44 And their husbands have the better right to take them back. Narrated al Hassan. Makil gave his sister in marriage and later her husband divorced her once. Narrated al Hassan. The sister of Makil bin Yasar was married to a man and then that man divorced her and remained away from her till her period of the Ida expired. Then he demanded for her hand in marriage, but Makil got angry out of pride and haughtiness and said he kept away from her when he could still retain her and now he demands her hand again. So Makil disagreed to remarry her to him, then Allah revealed. When you have divorced women and they have fulfilled the term of their prescribed periods, do not prevent them from marrying their former husbands. 2.232 So the Prophet sent for Makil and recited to him Allah's order, and consequently Makil gave up his pride and haughtiness and yielded to Allah's order. Narrated Nafi Ibn Umar bin al khattab divorced his wife during her menses. Allah's Messenger ordered him to take her back till she became clean. And when she got another period while she was with him, she, she should wait till she, becomes, till she became clean again. And only then, if he wanted to divorce her, he could do so 
before having sexual relations with her and that is the period Allah has fixed for divorcing women. Whenever Abdullah bin Umar was asked about that, he would say to, to the questioner, if you divorced her thrice, she is no longer lawful for you, unless she marries another man, and the other man divorces her in his turn. Ibn Umar further said, would that you people only give one or two divorces because the Prophet has ordered me so. Chapter 45 To take back one's wife while in her menses Narrated Yunus ibn Jubayr Ibn Umar divorced his wife while she was having her menses. Umar asked the Prophet who said Order him your son to take her back and then divorced her before her period of the Idda has elapsed. I asked Ibn Umar, will, the divorce, will that divorce during the menses be counted? He replied, if somebody behaves foolishly, will his foolishness be an excuse for his misbehavior? Chapter 46 A widow should mourn for four months and ten days. Narrated Humayd bin Nafi. Zainab bint Abu Salama told me these three narrations. Zainab said, I went to Umm Habiba, the wife of the Prophet, when her father Abu Sufyan bin Herb had died. Umm Habiba asked for a perfume which contained yellow scent, kaluk, or some other scent, and she first perf perfumed one of the girls with it and then rubbed her cheeks with it and said, By Allah, I am not in need of perfume, but I have heard Allah's messenger saying, It is not lawful for a lady who believes in Allah and the last day to mourn for a dead person for more than three days and unless he is her husband, for whom she should mourn for four months and ten days. Saying them further, Zainab further said, I, I, want, I want to Zainab bint, bint Josh, Josh, when her brother died, she asked for perfume and used some of it and said, By Allah, I am not in need of perfume, but I have heard Allah's messenger saying on the pulpit, It is not lawful for a lady who believes in Allah on the last day to mourn for more for more than three days except for her husband for whom she should mourn for four months and ten days. Zainab further said, I heard my mother, Um Salama, saying that a woman came to Allah's messenger and said, O oh Allah's messenger, the husband of my daughter has died and she is suffering from an eye disease. Can she apply cool to her eye? Allah's Messenger replied, No, twice or thrice. Every time she repeated her question, he said, No. Then Allah's Messenger added, It is just a matter of four months and ten days. In the pre Islamic period of ignorance, a widow among you sh should throw a, gl a globe of dung when one year has elapsed. I who made said, said to Zainab, what does throwing a globe of dung when one year had elapsed mean? Zainab said, When a lady was bereaved, bereaved, bereaved of her husband, she would live in a wretched small room and put on the worst clothes she had and would not touch any scent till one year had elapsed. Then she would bring an animal, e.g. a donkey, a sheep or a bird, and rub her body against it. The animal against which she would rub her body would scarcely survive. Only then she would come out of her room, whereupon she would be given a globe of dung which she would throw away and then she would use the scent she liked or the like. Chapter 47 Can a morning lady use coal? Narrated Ub Salama A woman was bereaved of her husband and her relatives worried about her eyes, which were deceased. They came to Allah's messenger and asked him to allow them to treat her eyes with coal, but he said, 
she should not apply cold to her eyes. In a pre-Islamic period, period of ignorance, a widow woman among you would stay in the worst of her clothes or the worst part of her house. And when a year had elapsed, if a dog passed by her, she would throw a globe of dung, nay, she cannot use coal, till four months and ten days have elapsed. Narrated Um Habiba. The Prophet said, It is not lawful for a Muslim woman who believes in Allah and the last day to mourn for, to mourn for more than three days except for her husband, for whom she should mourn for four months and ten days. Narrated Um Atiyah, we were, for, we were forbidden to mourn for more than three days except for a husband. Chapter 48 Cursed in incense may be used by a morning by a morning after being cleansed after being cleaned from a menses. Narrated Um Atiyah We were forbidden to mourn for more than three days for a dead person except for a husband for whom a wife should mourn for four months and ten days while in the morning in the morning period we were not allowed to put coal in our eyes nor perfume ourselves nor wear dyed clothes except a garment of asp special clothes made in Yemen but it was permissible for us that when one of us became clean from her menses and took a bath she could use a piece of a certain kind of incense and it was forbidden for us to follow funeral possessions. Chapter 49 A mourning lady can wear clothes of asp. Narrated Um Atiyah The Prophet said, It is not lawful for a lady who believes in Allah and the last day to mourn for more than three days for a dead person except for her husband, in which case she should neither put coal in her eyes, nor perf perfume herself, self, nor wear dyed clothes, except a garment of asp. Um Atiyah added, the Prophet said, she should not use perfume except when she becomes clean from her menses, whereupon she can use kust uh, and asfar two kinds of incense. Chapter 50 And those of you who die and leave behind wives, narrated Mujahid. Regarding the verse, if any one of you dies, if any of you dies and leaves be wives behind, that was the period of the Idda which the widow was obliged to spend in the house of that late husband, then Allah revealed, and those of you who die and leave wives should bequeath for their wives a year's maintenance and residence without turning them out. But if they leave, there is no blame on you for what they do of themselves, provided it is honorable, yet lawful marriage to 240, Mujahid said, Allah has ordered that a widow has the right to stay for seven months and twenty days with her husband's relatives through her husband's will and testament so that she will complete the period of one year of Ida. But the widow has the right to stay that extra period or go out of her husband's house as is indicated by the statement of Allah, but if they leave, there is no blame on you. 2 240. Ibn Abbas said, The above verse has cancelled the order of spending the period of the Idda at her late husband's house, and so she could spend her period of the Idda wherever she likes, and Allah says, without turning them out. Atal said, If she would, she could spend 
her period of the Ida at her husband's house and lived there according to her husband's will and testament. And if she would, she could go out of her husband's house as Allah says, There is no blame on you for what they do of themselves. 2 240. Atta added. Then the verses of inheritance were revealed and the order of residence for the widow was cancelled and she could spend her period of the Idda wherever she would like and she was no longer entitled to be accommodated by her husband's family. Narrated Zainab bint Umm Salama When Umm Habiba bint Abi Sufyan was informed of her, of her father's death she asked for perfume and rubbed it over her arms and said, I am not in need of perfume, but I have heard the Prophet saying, It is not lawful for a lady who believes in Allah and the last day to mourn for more than three days except for her husband, for whom the mourning period is four months and ten days. Chapter 51 The Earnings of a Prostitute, prostitute and the Illegal Wedding Narrated Abu Masud The Prophet prohibited taking the price of a dog, the earnings of a soothsayer and the money earned by prostitution. Narrated Abu Juhayfa The Prophet cursed the lady who practices tattooing, tattooing and the one who gets herself tattooed and one who eats takes riba ushery and the one who gives it and he prohibited taking the price of a dog and the money earned by prostitution and cursed the makers of pictures. Narrated Abu Huraira The Prophet forbade taking the earnings of a slave girl by prostitution. Chapter 52 the mod of the lady whose husband entered upon her to consummate his marriage. Narrated Said bin Jubair. I said to Ibn Umar, if a man accuses his wife of illegal sexual intercourse, what is the judgment? He said, Allah's Prophet separated the couple of Bani Ajlan. When the husband accused his wife for illegal sexual intercourse, the Prophet said, Allah knows that one of you two is a liar, so will one of you rep repent? But they refused. He then again said, Allah knows that one of you two is a liar, so will one of you repent? But they refused. Whereupon he separated them by divorce. Ayyub, a sub-narrator, said, Ahmed bin Dinar said to me, In their narration there is something which I do not see you mentioning. Yeah, the husband said, What about my money, Mar? The Prophet said, You are not entitled to take back money. For if you told the truth, you have already entered upon her and consummated your marriage with her. And if you are and if you are a liar, then you are less entitled to take it back. Chapter 53 the gift given by a husband to a divorced lady for whom Maud has not been fixed. Narrated Ibn Umar The Prophet said to those who were involved in a case of Leon, Your accounts are with Allah. One of you two is a liar. Your husband have right on her wife. The husband said, My money, O Allah's Apostle. The Prophet said, You are not entitled to take back any money. If you have told the truth, the Maud that you paid, was for having sexual relations with her lawfully, and if you are a liar, then you are less entitled to, then you are less, then you are less entitled to get it back.